In other news, a Virginia doctor is making it possible for kids of color to explore the unique opportunities in science. Dr. Jose Moray, a radiologist, is joining me now to talk about his effort and how he's getting kids excited about STEM. He joins us now from Virginia. Welcome to BNC. Thanks so much for being with us. But first thing I want you to do is start by telling what people, telling people what STEM is. Sometimes they don't know exactly what that means, although we use the term all the time. Thank you very much, Laverne. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Uh, and sometimes people also include A in there. They call it STEAM when the A stands for the arts. That's awesome. Now, we do know that in certain, uh, certain parts of the country, not everywhere, but there is a lack of diversity in the profession. Um, and I understand you're on a journey to change that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, specifically in, in science and technology or the STEM or STEAM fields, there's a huge lack of diversity. Uh, when you look at just the pure numbers, um, black and brown kids essentially make up about eight to 9%, less than 10% of the STEM jobs are, are going to these communities. And there's a lack of diversity really across the board, not just in ethnic diversity, but also in gender, gender identity, neurodiversity, um, or people with disabilities. Uh, within the STEM fields, it's, it's the highest salary paying fields. And um, one of the reasons that I'm, I'm very passionate about this is when we see patients, you know, we often talk about, uh, you know, diabetes, hypertension, but reality, people are more than just a disease process. And, and there's a lot of social and environmental factors that the, those factors that impact health. And really a lot of that stems from socioeconomics. Socioeconomics has a lot of things that uh, other comorbidities that goes along with it, whether it's, you know, living in a food desert, lack of access to good health care, good education, um, or just upward mobility. And the STEM and STEAM fields, those are the ones that are generating the greatest amount of wealth. And those are the things that we can elevate communities of all underrepresented uh, backgrounds into those fields, then we can elevate folks through that socioeconomic status and hopefully those other comorbidities will slowly go away. So that's really the passion um, of why I'm involved in, in this process. Wow, it's a worthy cause. What are some of the projects that you're working on and, and why are you being called the intergalactic doctor? Oh, uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, for asking. That's usually one of the things that people are, are most interested in. Um, the, the, the reason they call me the intergalactic doctor really came from my background. So um, I'm a physician by formal training. Radiology is my, my subspecialty. Um, but after uh, radiology, I actually started studying computer science, particularly uh, data analytics and machine learning. And that opened up the opportunity for me to work uh, with various institutions, both in the public and the private sector. Uh, I was associate chief health officer for IBM Watson Health. Then I've worked with NASA uh, around their iTech Accelerator, which is based here out of the Hampton Roads area in the NIA. Uh, and I've worked with uh, organizations such as the United Nations and the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. And in the private sector, I've even worked with you know institutions and companies like the Hyperloop, which was a, a brainchild of, of Elon Musk. And so the combination of being a physician and being involved in a lot of emerging technologies and space technology is kind of why someone ended up nicknaming me at some point as the, the first intergalactic uh, doctor. But the type of the things that we're working on, especially at Ad Astra Media, is we're really looking to inspire kids from underrepresented communities uh, using the power of media for public good. Uh, oftentimes, kids from these backgrounds we don't have representation within uh, within media, whether it's in books, whether it's in uh, comics, whether it's in animation or live action. Often you don't have someone from an underrepresented community that's playing the protagonist in a scientific role. And the main issue as to why black and brown kids for the most part uh, don't go into this in the STEM fields and under underrepresented communities is we lack role models. We lack um, you know, people to, to look up to, to aspire. We lack representation. You talk to kids in middle school and high school and they feel like they're out of place oftentimes. Uh, they're looking for how do, how, you know, who do I, who can I aspire to be? Who can I dream to be like? And they're usually looking for things in the arts or uh, in sports. Very rarely are they following a, a scientist or an innovator, uh, someone that looks like them that's in those fields. And we are creating that, uh, giving them access to that by creating uh, books and animations, documentaries, uh, live action, as well as graphic novels that have diverse protagonists 
as the scientist, as the doctor, as the engineer. Um, because if you can't see it, you can't be it. Or if you can't see it, you can't dream it. Well, I completely agree with you. I'm big on STEM. I think all kids should be uh, led in that direction. You probably need a big celebrity to promote it because that's what kids seem to look up to these days. Uh, but we appreciate all the work you're doing and thank you so much for joining us here on BNC.